Our next speaker is Matt Rock. Matt is a great friend of the Gala. We've been proud to invite him here many times. Last year he spoke here with great passion, sincerity and pride about his members' courage in that dreadful, dreadful tower fire disaster. This year he's celebrating 100 years of the Fire Brigades Union. Come to the platform, Matt Rack. Sisters and brothers, comrades, friends. Uh, as Alan said, last year was a, a difficult speech to give here at a big meeting. A very difficult and emotional time for our members. Uh, and this year that continues. We now have the Grenfell Tower public inquiry underway. Fire Brigade Union members, hundreds of whom have been interviewed by the police as part of that investigation, all provided with trade union representation in every one of those interviews. And we have heard in that remarkable evidence, harrowing evidence, of a horrifying and terrifying night of firefighters facing an utterly impossible situation, of fire crews who ran out of basic equipment trying to tackle that fire, who ran out of breathing apparatus, whose safety rules had to be put to one side in order to try to save lives. We heard of a story, these are remarkable stories of a firefighter dangling from the fourth floor window in a desperate attempt to put out that fire held by his legs by his colleague. Of a crew whose air was running out on their breathing apparatus sets, whose warning whistles were sounding and who concluded between themselves they were not going to be able to exit that building. And one of whom decided that he needed to text his mum to say goodbye. That was the position that people were in on that horrible and terrifying evening. It is heart-wrenching to listen to that evidence and it is heartbreaking to see firefighter after firefighter, members of our union, breaking down in tears as they are asked to relive that terrible night. And our union therefore stands shoulder to shoulder with them. And we say, I think with the vast majority of our country that there is no blame on those firefighters for what happened at Grenfell and we need to apportion the blame where it properly lies and we say we say to the public inquiry focus your attention on what really lies behind that horror we stand shoulder to shoulder with the community I've been asked to this morning about the green scarves. And if you look at the front there, you'll see our banner about Grenfell. The green scarves are worn on the 14th of every month by the community in North Kensington, when the whole area goes utterly silent to remember that it is one of the most powerful events I've ever attended. And I would urge everyone, if you can, ever attend that, to attend it and share with the community of Grenfell and North Kensington. But what we say to the public inquiry is you need to seriously get to the heart of what lies behind what happened on the 14th of June last year. Decades of deregulation, of saying business cannot regulate themselves. Decades of cuts to our public services. And I have to say, criminal complacency about public safety right at the heart of central government. And those must end if we're to see a change. Now, firefighters will say they are not heroes. That's not a word they use about themselves. But from start to finish, we are a team, whether that's the people in our emergency fire controls. And think about this, comrades, taking appalling and horrifying and terrifying calls of people whose life were in danger and in many cases who did not survive to the fire crews who turned out in response to those calls, but also involving those who provide training, those who go out and inspect our public buildings to see if they are safe. And they would simply say this, if you ask them about it, this is what we do, it's our job. We chose that career. And all we ask in response 
is decent standards to enable us to do that job safely and effectively. But you look, if you look at Grenfell and what has already come out in the evidence, the fire lifts didn't work. The fire doors were not compliant with regulations. The smoke extraction system didn't work. The windows were incorrectly fitted as part of the refurbishment. And of course, the building was wrapped in flammable cladding. It was effectively wrapped in petrol. And every time I've lived with this for a year, and every time I think of it, I think, how the hell can you wrap a building that people live in, in petrol? It is disgusting and it is a crime that it was allowed to happen. So we are clear on that issue. There is a consultation and people are hedging the bets and dodging the issue. We are absolutely, there are hundreds of buildings, including NHS buildings, including residential tower blocks, with exactly the same material on the outside. And we are very clear, it should be banned, it should be removed from every building where it is, and that those who are responsible, including central government, should pay the price of that. And we say, it is staggering. If this had been a terror attack, imagine what the response of central government would have been. But a year down the line, we see exactly the same complacency that led to this horror in the first place. So yes, there may well need to be prosecutions of those responsible. But we also need to look deeper at what is going on in relation to housing, in relation to public services and public safety. At the rules, the regulations and the enforcement of those rules and regulations. The idea that business should be allowed to simply regulate itself, which lies at the heart of what happened there. And this is staggering, but this union, my union made a warning as long ago as 1999 about the threat of applying flammable cladding to the outside of buildings. And we have to ask, why was that warning ignored by subsequent governments? So Grenfell for us is at the heart of much of what is wrong with our society, where the views of ordinary people, including those who lived in that tower block, who made warnings about it. The views of ordinary people are ignored in housing, in workplaces, in local communities. And that shows the injustice that exists in this class divided society, where decisions are dominated by the needs of private profits, where business is told that they can simply regulate themselves. It is utterly disgusting. Anyone looking at this objectively and people looking back in the future will look at horror at how this has allowed to, be, to happen. And I say, in conclusion, I think we need to put on the agenda of sweeping the whole bloody system away. Of saying, we want a rational society that puts ordinary people, that puts the majority at the heart of decision making. It's called socialism. It means the real rule of the majority. It means, yes, decent and safe housing for all, as we say on our banner. But it also means the opportunity to put an end to wars, put an end to injustice, put an end to exploitation. Allow us collectively around the world to start to tackle the threats of climate change as sisters and brothers here and throughout the world. That, comrades, is a future worth fighting for. It's called socialism. Solidarity forever.